Getting your hands dirty and making mud pies is like a childhood rite of passage. Well, today we're leveling up our childhoods with an awesome mud kitchen build. A mud kitchen is exactly like it sounds. It's an outdoor kids play kitchen where mud pies are always the recipe of the day. I am going to be building off of this privacy fence section that I have, but you could totally do this freestanding as well. I'm just kind of working here with what I have. Now, this is a project panel and it's gonna be my countertop. So kind of envision right about like this. It's gonna come out of the wall. We're gonna add some legs to it and then add a lower shelf, an upper shelf. Kind of think of those like play kitchens that you can buy and have indoors, except a little bit larger and outside and intended for mud. The first step I need to do is to add an additional two by four to the back of the privacy fence. There are already a couple boards here that I could have worked off of, but I feel like it would have been too high for our kids' mud kitchen. I want the countertop height to be around 27, 28 inches. Now my fence is leveled really nicely and following the grade of the yard. So if I were to just level this kind of what true level is, it might look a little wonky with the fence. So instead what I'm gonna do is use two blocks and follow the exact level line. Okay, so now this two by four is following the level line of the privacy fence and I can go around to the front side, it's gonna hold in place and attach it with some screws. Now that I have a support board on the back, I'm gonna install another two by four onto the front. This is gonna be a true ledger board and hold up my countertop. The nice thing is that I can see where that board is to determine my level line. The ledger board is gonna hold up the back of our kitchen counter. But for the front here, I have a couple leftover posts from when we put in the fence, and I'm gonna cut those down to size and use them as nice, strong, supportive legs. A post level is really helpful for this. My countertop is level, my post is level in all directions, so I'm gonna take a screw and put it down through the countertop. Put one down into the back of my ledger board. Now that I have the first leg in, I just wanna double check the levelness of the other side and mark that post to be cut. We are level on all sides, so I'm gonna put screw down into my post. We have a nice, secure, level countertop, and now comes the fun part. We get to plan out what we want this layout of a kitchen to be, and thankfully a mud kitchen is significantly easier than designing a real kitchen, but there are still some things to consider. I'm gonna be using plastic bins for a sink, and any good mud kitchen needs a double sink. I mean, this is very fancy. We have a strainer for our dishes, and we also have kind of a faux cooktop. This actually should be down in the bottom of a sink, but I thought it looked like a little cooking range and could have a lot of fun with it. But you really could get creative with this. You could use metal bowls. You could use an actual small little sink. It's really up to you. One important thing when choosing what container you're gonna use for your sink is you wanna make sure that it has a bit of a lip. This way I can create a hole in my countertop and it's gonna sit down in it. But when I measure these out, I wanna work off of the widest point. I'm gonna draw a line about half inch to three quarters of an inch inside the edge so that when I cut with my jigsaw, I'm sure that my sink isn't gonna fall straight through. First, I'm using my drill with a larger bit on it to create a hole so I can drop my saw down in. Now I wanna just double check to make sure that it fits in nice and snug, and it does the cutest mud sink you ever did see. <laughs> Now I have a nice snug fit. Another area that I wanna kind of quasi built in is our little stove top here. And for this, all I'm gonna do is drill down in through my counter so it can kind of sit flush. Just have a large drill bit on that I compared the size. Just like that, ah, oh, so cute. This is a great example of how just adding some molding and one by can make this look so much more beefy and finished. 
The fun part comes in when you're adding all the pots and pans and little accessories that you plan to use. And whatever you have is kind of going to determine the storage you need. So I'm going to show you what I've gathered up. It's a combination of old pots and pans and things I don't use anymore, and then some really inexpensive things that I picked up at the store that I knew would hold up outside. My plan for storage is to add one long shelf, about 40 inches here. And then at Lowe's, I picked up this wire rack and a few of these just little key rings. And I'm actually gonna put a lower shelf in as well. As a parent, I know that having a place for your kids to put their things away increases the likelihood that they might actually clean up. So underneath the mud kitchen, I've added a shelf and I'm adding some waterproof storage. This way, when the kitchen's not in use, everything can be packed up into these bins, sealed, and then kept there. Only thing I need to do is, bet you can't guess, change the color. I wanna hit this with some outdoor spray paint. The black is just a little too strong for all the playful kind of primary colors we have going on. Now it's time to pretty this kitchen up. Right now, it kind of looks like mud. We can do so much better than that. I'm gonna use all heavy duty exterior paint products so that it can stand up to weather and also all the mud. <laughs> A simple build that promotes outdoor play, imagination, and creativity for kids is a major win in my book. Time to make some mud pies.